Hey, welcome back, Wester here. Okay, now, instead of me going into the whole drama of explaining, uh, re reading all this stuff out, um, input shaping, shape of workflow, what is it? Okay, I'll show you the benefits first, and then we can go into how to actually do it. So, so I'll just jump into my machine. Um, I've just been heat soaking it. So, um, normally when you do input shaper, uh, if you have had a look at one of my uh, recent videos, you've got to basically do the input shaping and then um, so you, you go to the um, oh, which one is it? one of these macros I can't remember which one uh, which one is it anyway so before you had to go and do the uh, calibration or do your resonance test and then you had to SSH into your machine and then modify a file and then basically run a couple of scripts to um, do your um, grit to get your PNG graph. Um, so this setup is really cool. It gives you two macro, three macros. One is X, Axis um, Shaper Calibration and that's the same as doing your uh, X and Y. So this is to work out your uh, what frequency and what speed you need to uh, work the, your suggestions are to work with. It's also got a belt shaper calibration button, which is really cool. Um, this actually tests uh, the resonance on each of the A and B belts, and it actually tells you, it shows you um, whether one belt's out or not. Um, and then it's also got another one if you've got vibration issues or, or issues that you may think from vibration it's going to ex excitate access at frequency uh, macro so um, this is all put in by what I'm about to show you in a moment but so the cool thing is it's just you just click once you've done the test um, it, you just click on machine and it's got a file in here called um, ADXL results and it's got three folders in here with vibrations belts and input shaper so input shaper it holds um, three or four to, of the latest ones so we'll go to the latest one I did which was October 19th and just open that up and it's right there it tells me um, it shows me a nice uh, X graph and it's telling me to rec it recommends me to use the MZ V frequency and then it gives my recommended um, no greater than 7400 on X so close that and then you can go and have a look at the one for Y. And this one is again a nice, pretty clean um, peak. Again, uh, MZV for the recommended shape of frequency, which you'll be putting into your printer file. And uh, my MZ, MZV recommendation is no greater than uh, less than 3700. So mm, I normally run, uh, I'm not an expert, but from the research I've done, you, whichever is the lowest out of these two, you start with that setting. Um, so, and also you need to know the frequency. So you need to write down the 3700, and then the frequency is 35.6 hertz. Um, so 35.6 hertz at 3700. And then the other one was uh, 50 hertz at 7400. And you add that into your printer file config way down in, so you can exit out. Oh, so also it does a belt one as well. So a belt one, it basically scrubs the data to do a, um, when you do a belt run. Uh, that that belt one and I, and that brings up a belt and these these are both the belts A and B so there's the A is blue and the orangey one is um, the B belt um, and this here shows it's, it's the tension's nice it's around 135 and it's um, running a nice even tension between the two belts otherwise if one's looser than the other one of these bands will peak lower than the than the other one and you'll see the difference it's split so this is actually the belt frequency is tuned 
pretty good because you can hardly even see the peak it's actually almost joined together so that I wouldn't even touch that okay so we'll exit out of there go back to the normal screen um, so it's actually a little bit of work to get to that to, to get this all to work but it's actually worth the time I think to actually get this up and running because it's so easy once you've actually done it you can go in straight into your um, config files and just it creates this folder automatically on the first run um, it does everything for you so you don't actually have to go and do anything so that's what it does so how do you do it so um, Frix X um, this, is a, this is clipping and input shape of workflow so this basically tells you what it does which is what I've just explained I've just showed you how it actually works so these are the installations are quite simple um, but there are a few um, traps so first thing I would do is do a backup of your um, uh, your printer config file so just go down to your printer.cfg and then oh, sorry just tick tick printer.cfg and then just download and it will download a zip file and just put it wherever you want um, I've just done I've done mine so so if you make a mistake you can fix this up uh, pretty quickly by just reinstalling the original um, saved uh, CFG file <coughs> so um, so basically it's saying copy copy the um, macro the the IS shaper calibrate CFG macro directly into your into your config so click on that and then just basically um, I'll just control A control C and then go back into your machine and go into your printer config and go down anywhere in the printer config except for um, below that line <laughs> um, and then just paste it in there um, and just paste it in there and then save the file so I'm just going to undo that because I've already got it in there and then just save and close um, so that's step one done backspace um, be sure to have the code shell um, underscore command pi clipper extension installed so I didn't know what that was and basically what it is is it's telling you to install um, Kaya and um, once you install Kaya there'll be an, there's an option there to install code shell command dot py so let me just find that just a moment so the links in the description for this one here for the um, the clipping input shape of, work, shape of workflow and then also there's a uh, I've just found the Kiowa installation um, guide uh, in the repo and I, that's also in the links um, below in the description so this is pretty easy to do so do this part first um, I actually didn't know what this was so I struggled with it so this is basically um, software to help install these um, scripts that, are, that we're going to be installing in a, uh, later on so the instructions so it's a script that helps install in clipper etc etc so uh, we don't need to worry about it uh, with uh, the raspberry pi um, unless you've got a raspberry pi uh, i've got a cb1 so basically it's a, pretty much a similar process for both so you basically need to copy Uh, this here and open up an SSH on your machine once you're in your machine paste that in let that run so once it's installed once uh, I'll we'll just let that run because um, it's still installing so once it uh, finishes I'll bring it back 
Uh, once it's installed, use the following command to download Kiowa into your home directory. So we'll, we'll do that. So I, I, I think this is already installed. I can't remember. I think it was already installed when I did this. <coughs> So we'll just let this finish its thing. Okay, that's just finished. So I had you on pause, it was taking too long. So that part's done. Um, and as you can see here, it's got zero upgraded and zero installed. So it's actually already there. So, so Git's already the newest version. It's already installed. But it checked it, it downloaded it, fetched it, and then it went to check it against the one that was installed. And it's gone, no, I don't need to upgrade. It's up to, up to date. So it doesn't cause you any harm to do that. That's why I'm doing it again. So now we go to step two. So step two, we'll just copy this and bring this across and paste it in here. Okay, so this is already installed. It says fatal uh, destination path already exists and is not an empty directory. So that's fine. So that tells us what, that it's already installed. So now we can start the um, Kiowa. So copy this line, paste that in there, and that runs. Um, it runs us here, and what does it say now? Now you find yourself on Kiowa, yep. Uh, you see several actions to choose from depending on what, what, which one you want to do. Um, to choose an action, simply perform action prompt, confirm enter. So, I'm just trying to remember. Um, which one? I think it was, I think I had to go into advanced for and there it is there so option four and then in here you've got option eight and then so which is the code shell command which was what it's actually asking for up here in step uh, in the um, clipping step two is, yeah, this is what it's telling you to install here so um, so I'll just go enter you're about to install gcode shell command yes so Y and enter and it says it's already exists in the destination location I'll just go yes Um, so create an example shell command Y for yes. Okay, so that's done. So it's actually um, installed, restarting Clipper, and restart Clipper successful. So great. So the MCU's up, Clipper's up, nice. Okay, so now we press B for back, enter, doesn't matter which case, and then Q for quit. Happy printing. So we'll go in and test to see if that part worked. So there should be a macro in here called uh, Hello World, which is here. 
so we should be able to see uh, I'll, I'll click on hello world it should actually send a response and it did it sent a response saying hello world so it's all functioning okay sorry if this is boring the heck out of you but this is just part of the process it's honestly it's so worth it if you actually go through this part um, I know I'm not trying to sell it <laughs> um, okay so add my script folder so this is where I got called out um, because I just read that first part sweet add, add my scripts folder at the root directory um, in your config file so there's two things that you need to make sure that you do correctly here first one is um, go into your root directory of printed data config so basically go into your um, SSH and then I'm, I'm using um, uh, this, this software here um, Moxa term it is and so I'm just, I just need to go back Um, and I'm looking for oh no I was actually in the right folder before I hope so BQ and this is what we're looking for printed data printed uh, underscore printed data config printed data and then config it's so small you can hardly see it um, so you, you what you need to do is create this folder called scripts so basically just um, add, add this folder into it so you can do that uh, yeah, you have to do that in here, sorry. Okay, so... The, um, so, yeah, so create this folder called scripts, and then once you've got that uh, in, you can download, you go into the scripts folder here. Oh, actually, one thing. Sorry, jumping about a little bit, because it was a little bit complex for me to figure out. So, if you read on... Before we do any more, um, if you're using Windows, do not copy paste all of the files. Be careful with the line endings plot uh, uh, for the for the plot dot graphs and the vi uh, graphs underscore vibration. So out of that scripts, we'll not copy those because we will run the bottom script here, and that'll install them um, correctly. So we need to do everything but plots and graph vibrations so we'll go in here yeah so we basically need to um, right click save as uh, I'm just going to create a folder um, called scripts right and then you so so everything but those two so plots and vibrations so we've done the top one and now we need to do so just oh, sorry so this is system info so save and then we'll go um, code shelf top, so save link as save and then shell commands save link as save now these two here because I'm using Windows the um, the plots and the graph vibrations you don't copy them out of here which is a mistake I made and I ended up having errors uh, syntax errors and that's because I didn't <laughs> I didn't read that last part of section 3 because I just carried on my merry way thinking oh yeah no that's easy but yeah that's very important to read that second part so now to now what we need to do is basically copy these so copy and then 
run the script in your shell. So go under here. So this basically um, downloads the files um, by using the example we get uh, w get um, over ssh. So we'll do the do the first one. So we'll paste. Uh, I I need to quit. Oh yeah, no, it has, and I'll clear this up. Sorry. So we know where we are. Okay, so now we can paste that um, script. So that's done the first one. And then we'll copy this script. Copy. Paste that. So that's saying vibrations. The first one was printer data. Enter. So that's done and then we need to do this next part here which is really important so we need to make the scripts executable so we'll copy this first one and paste in there enter uh, hang on oh okay yep we need to see we need to change into the directory here so we'll go copy that Now we can change this properties, make it executable. If you don't do this, everything will work except for the, um, and I'm only telling you this because I did it wrong, uh, it, it, it'll all work, but then you won't be able to see any of the, of the graphs that it produces. It'll, it makes them, but you can't actually open them because it's not um, executable. Okay, so uh, now we need to add this add this part into your printer file. So copy that. Um, oh, so we need to go up to here and go into your machine printer. I'm so sorry if this is taking too long. Um, and then just base you can paste it pretty much anywhere you want. Um, so just grab somewhere in there and then paste it and then save your file so I won't because I've already got it posted in here so that's so there's save save and close okay and then what do we do now we need to Alright, so don't worry about that. So now, now we'll restart the machine. So that's all done correctly. If that's all done correctly, don't close the wrong one here. So now, if we have a look in that scripts folder, we should be able to see. Yeah, that's 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 correct. Right, so we'll we'll see what happens. I'll just we'll just do a restart sorry if I'm sounding a little bit unsure because this is the first time I actually done the tutorial on it um, so I'm kind of doing it again um, so so we'll just do a firmware restart hopefully we won't come up with any errors okay cool no errors great so now we need to home it, we need to home all. And you need to do your shaping at full temp as well. So I'm at bed chamber temp. I'm just gonna heat up my uh, bed. Okay, so that's done the home all. So now all we need to do is wait for the bed to crank up to 110. Um, normally you'd heat soak the whole thing. Um, I just I just want to demonstrate what happens. Um, so hopefully we don't have any errors. <coughs> so we'll go and we're just going to wait for that. It's up to 73. I'll just pause it until we get to 110 and come back in. Back in a sec. Okay, so build temps, uh, plate temps 110. Build plate is at 92.7. Uh, 
uh, chain was up over 40 so normally it's, it's around 45 to 40, 48 to 50 so it's a little bit cool but um, normally you do your um, calibrating I'm just new to calibrating so I'm not an expert so um, but what they tell me is that um, it's best to do it heat soaked so that you've got all your belts are all hot and all your components are all hot um, so we just basically need to do um, we'll do a belt shape of calibration and it will just run at the start of the frequencies already here um, and this is just going to basically hopefully if we've done everything right it should um, create a file and um, yeah and, and create a the, the two CS, CSV files a Y and the X uh, sorry the A and the B in this case uh, yeah, it's vibrating all right because my camera's dropped down um, and then it will correlate automatically it'll auto automatically do it all here uh, it'll correlate all the inf information and put it into uh, a, a graph format for for this will overlap the two uh, A and the A and B data, so you'll be able to see and compare the difference. And then with the um, X and Y, it will do one of each, and you can look at the PNG, uh, the the, um, the pictorial file for each one of those, and it'll show you the calibration just like I showed when we started. So it only goes up to 133 megahertz, uh, hertz, sorry, um, and that's because from what I've been reading, and that, there's actually a lot of good information in here, actually, about um, interpreting the, the, the graphs and stuff, so it's really good reading in here, um, and it gives you examples, and it gives you all sorts of things. So you can look through that stuff, you can look at um, graphs and all sorts of stuff in here, so it kind of gives you a bit of an idea of what you're looking at see for incorrect tension here different tensions um, and all that sort of stuff so it's really good material so definitely a good read uh, if you're into that sort of stuff <laughs> so anyway so we're nearly done we've got uh, we'll go up to 133 and then I don't think it needs to do it again I can't remember on this one oh yeah it'll do it twice yeah so it's checking each each axis. So we'll let that run through. So now that it gets to 1.33, it should start running the script. Yep. So it's now running the um, plot graph script. I 
we'll leave it to this thing. Starting to feed some data in. Okay, so the graph's finished. And so now we should be able to go in here and go, there, you'll, this wouldn't have been here before, but there, there's Excel results, belts, because we did the belts one, and there should be one that was done, there we go, 1010. It's a PNG file, there's the CSVs that were created, and this is what it's telling you. So it's telling you that the um, that the B belt is a fraction uh, less tension than the um, than the A belt. So you could probably give that quarter of a turn and then retest it, and then see how that comes out. So that all works brilliantly. And the same thing for when you want to do the other one, you do that same thing. So you run the macro for the um, axis um, shape of calibration, and that comes out. That will, that will punch out um, so you go back to the folders and go to to input shaper and that will show you the um, files for X and Y for the PNGs so so yeah so that's it in a nutshell um, so apologies if this was as boring as bat crap <laughs> but um, yeah it's really really good because uh, it's all automated you don't have to actually do anything manually apart from click a button and do your all, all home and, and heat, heat soak it first so anyway i hope you enjoyed the video sorry to bore the heck out of those that are bored but um yeah geek out <laughs> cheers